Retro Records who are here, welcome to our weekly update covering the latest news in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. I'm a what? A wizard. Coming up, Max's TV series takes another important step. An old Potter book sells for more than $13,000. The devs behind Hogwarts Legacy continue their hiring spree and more. But first, there's actually a new Harry Potter book releasing this year. Scholastic and Bloomsbury have just announced the pending release of Christmas at Hogwarts, a new illustrated book that brings to life Harry Potter's first festive season in the Wizarding World. Aimed at fans of all ages, this 48-page hardcover is a celebration of everything that makes the holiday season at Hogwarts so memorable. For over 25 years, Harry Potter has ignited a generation to love reading, said Scholastic President Ellie Berger. With Christmas at Hogwarts, we're thrilled to publish a timeless picture book for families to read aloud together and enjoy alongside the original Harry Potter series. It's a festive celebration of friendship, family, and sharing the joys of the season and we hope it will inspire a new holiday reading tradition for many years to come. Talented illustrator Ziyi Gao grew up in Beijing and first read the books at the age of 13. In this book, I have woven together elements from the enchanting wizarding world and traditional Christmas festivities, Gao said. I wish to bring an immersive visual experience for every child and adult longing to spend a happy Christmas alongside Harry and his friends at Hogwarts. Christmas at Hogwarts will be priced at $19.99 and release on October 15th. There are plans to publish the book simultaneously in 31 countries, including the U.S. by Scholastic and in the U.K. by Bloomsbury Children's Books. $19.99 seems reasonable enough, but would you pay thirteen dollars for a Potter book? In a tale that seems almost as magical as the story within its pages, a proof copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone that was bought for merely pennies in 1997 recently sold at an auction for an astonishing £11,000, which is roughly $13,900. This is according to an article from the Associated Press. It was discovered in a South London shop as part of a trio of books purchased for just 40 pence. This uncorrected proof copy would then sit unnoticed for years. The unnamed seller had picked up the book as a throw-in with other titles and didn't read it or pay much attention to it. That is until she read online about the soaring values for some of the older Potter books. What makes this copy even more unique is a misprint on the inside title page, which lists the author as J.A. Rowling instead of the correct J.K. Rowling. Jim Spencer, head of books at Hanson's Auctioneers, emphasized the significance of this find, stating, This proof copy is where the Harry Potter phenomenon began. This is the very first appearance in print of the first Potter novel. For a much cheaper price, you'll be able to buy all of the original Harry Potter books as part of a new box set from Bloomsbury. The UK-based publisher recently announced the Owl Post box set, scheduled for release this August, according to an article from the Rolling Library. This set celebrates the iconic designs of the Harry Potter series and features the official logo originally created by Mary Grand Prey. This collection brings together all seven novels, each bound in hardback and inside of a protective cardboard sleeve to hold the full set. Additionally, it includes a colorful sticker sheet as well as supplementary content like quizzes, listicles, and interesting facts that delve deeper into the lore and legacy of the Wizarding World. The set will retail for £140. In another big update for fans, the search to find the perfect writer to adapt the beloved series into Max's live-action TV show could be nearing its conclusion. Deadline is back yet again with another report, this one claiming that Max has narrowed down the pool of possible showrunners to three names. Francesca Gardner, Tom Moran, and Kathleen Jordan. Each candidate brings a different set of experiences to the table. Gardner is known for her work as a consulting producer on HBO's Succession and as an executive producer on His Dark Materials. Moran created The Devil's Hour on Amazon, a British thriller starring Peter Capaldi. Jordan has made waves with the Netflix series Teenage Bounty Hunters, a show about teenage twin sisters trying to balance their lives as high school students with their new, unlikely careers as bounty hunters. The selection process has been a lengthy one, involving multiple executives from both WB and Max, as well as J.K. Rowling and her team. These three writers will now have a chance to refine their visions on how they would bring the Wizarding World to television screens. A decision is expected to be made by June of this year. Warner Brothers Discovery President and CEO David Zaslav recently announced that the Harry Potter series is targeting a 2026 release. And with that announcement, we're now left to speculate on when each season will land. Keep in mind, Max is expecting to release new seasons of the show over a 10-year time frame. Screen Rant's Angel Shaw predicts we'll see Philosopher's Stone in 2026, with Chamber of Secrets then landing in 2027. Prisoner of Azkaban a year later in 2028. After that, though, Shaw could see a scenario where Max moves to releasing the show every two years through 2036. 
From Goblet of Fire on, each book is significantly longer than the first three. This would give the writers more time to ensure each season can serve as a faithful adaptation of the book series, which is a goal frequently mentioned by WB and Max executives. As for the Potter video games, Hogwarts Legacy developer Avalanche Software continued its hiring spree this week. A new job listing appeared for a temporary motion capture technician. This adds to a growing list of available jobs appearing on the company's website in recent months, which still includes roles for temporary associate software engineer, senior character artist, and two open positions for a lead advanced technical artist. The listings mention joining the team behind the blockbuster open world action RPG Hogwarts Legacy as they create what's next. And in an industry that's mostly eliminating positions right now, this is certainly a good sign for the devs at Avalanche and WB's faith in them. But even though Hogwarts Legacy was the best-selling game of 2023, Avalanche has been quiet about what's next. In January, they announced that the Haunted Hogsmeade DLC, previously exclusive to PlayStation, would eventually land on other platforms sometime later this summer. The biggest news item here, though, was their mention of additional updates and features. This has left fans everywhere, myself included, speculating about what could be next for Hogwarts Legacy. And I have to say, I was originally in the camp thinking that this was just going to be some minor update, maybe a photo mode, a few bug fixes, perhaps something like a permanent cross wands mode. But after recently joining a few of my fellow Hogwarts Legacy creators, I came away with a bit of a different impression. I gotta give credit to Andy Reloads here because I'm starting to think that this could be more significant than I was expecting. But I do think for the casual gamer, who really enjoyed the first game but isn't such a fan if they're going to if they're going to want to get people to come back and play their game which is what the big boss the CEO is saying then i think just adding in this minor update isn't really going to do them much That's good. That's such a good point. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, by the time this is ready, it will have been a year and a half since the original release of Legacy. Now, while those minor things would certainly excite a lot of you listening to this right now and would excite me, it's not going to reach that general audience that Hogwarts Legacy just did such a phenomenal job of impacting. Of course, all of that on its way to being the best-selling game of 2023. So I'm not fully convinced yet, but I do think this could be a more substantial DLC than we were first thinking. Only time will tell what Avalanche has up their sleeve for this summer. Speaking of this summer, that's not all Potter fans have to look forward to. The Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London is set to unveil an array of new additions to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And by the way, that's the 20th anniversary of the movie, not the book. Man, I feel so old. For the first time ever, attendees will get to visit Professor Trelawney's divination classroom, complete with velvet poofs, patterned rugs, and an impressive tower crafted from 500 vintage teacups. Return to Azkaban will also give fans an opportunity to explore the interior of the night bus. A full cross-section of the bus will be on display, complete with moving beds that mimic the bumpy ride Harry experienced through London. And in honor of everyone's favorite Defense Against the Dark Arts professor, Remus Lupin, the studio tour will also introduce a new section of his classroom. This will include the Boggart wardrobe and the Boggart jack-in-the-box. Additional highlights of Return to Azkaban will include an enchanting visit to the Great Hall, as well as performances by the Hogwarts Frog Choir. You can even catch a peek at the Monster Book of Monsters going on a rampage in Harry's room at the Leaky Cauldron. Return to Azkaban runs from May 1st through September 4th at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London. Be sure and check out the video description below for additional information on all of our stories today. If I missed anything this week, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to add it for next week. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel, bell icon on, and make sure you don't miss any of our Potter updates. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.